Barrows is an essential stepping stone for any Iron Man looking to get into PVMing. I think for most people, Barrows is their first real taste of bossing because of the low barrier to entry and the upgrades obtained from here are pretty necessary for future bosses. So if you've never done any bossing before and might be intimidated about jumping into it, let me reassure you that Barrows is some of the easiest content in the game, allowing you to come here pretty early on. Barrows can be a really chill grind, or it can be painfully slow, so optimizing the time between runs will be your best friend. There are a ton of different ways to get here, but I'm going to only go over three main ways. The first is to use the fairy ring code BKR, and then run to this boat, which will take you pretty close to the Barrows entrance. This is the slowest way, but if you have no other option, this will work. The next best way is to use Mauritania legs 3 or 4 to teleport to Berg de Rot and run the rest of the way. This is about 12 seconds faster than the first method, but there is still a much faster way. Option 3 is to make a Barrows portal in your house. Now this does require 83 mage, however, you can do a plus 5 boost using a spicy stew to build this portal at 78 mage. If this is your first time coming here, this might seem a little high, but in the long run, having this portal will save you a ton of time. On average, it'll take roughly 1300 chests to complete the collection log for Barrows. So as an example, the time spent running to Barrows over the course of these 1300 chests will take you about 18 and 14 hours respectively. And this is assuming you're using stamina pots to run the entire way, which as an Iron Man early on just isn't very viable. So given these values, I think spending the extra time to get 78 magic is more than worth it. That being said though, getting more Tanya Legs 3 can still be highly beneficial, which I'll explain in more detail later on. The only mandatory requirement to access Barrows is to complete the Priest in Peril quest to unlock Mortania. Like I said before, the level requirements to start Barrows is quite low, with you only really needing 60 base melee stats to access Dragon Weaponry, 50 range and 50 mage for a Magic Shortbow and Iben Staff respectively, and 43 prayer for overheads. However, I would recommend getting 70 defense so that if you do get a drop, you can wear it right away. 78 mage for the barrels portal, 61 range for the rune crossbow, and 60 prayer as having higher prayer will save you on prayer pots. Now the standout one here is the rune crossbow because the magic short bow with rune arrows is more DPS. However, compared to a rune crossbow with broad bolts, it's only a small DPS increase against arrows, and broad bolts are a much easier ammunition to consistently resupply on as an Iron Man. You have a lot of flexibility in what you wear at Barrows, and it kind of comes down to personal preference a bit, but you want to stack as much defense as possible while maintaining higher than negative 65 magic bonus. Your main DPS will be with Mage, so it might seem kind of weird that you can get away with such a negative magic bonus, but the Barrows brothers have awful magic defense, so you will still hit very consistently. The reason we want to stack as much defense as possible is because ideally you will only be praying against 3 out of the 6 brothers. So as a general starting point, your gear should look something like this. You will want to replace your ruined gear however with pieces you get from Barrows as you complete runs. There are 3 different weapons that are generally used here depending on your account's progression. The lowest is to use Slayer Staff with Magic Dart, which is an okay option, but really is quite low DPS compared to the next two options. The second option is to use Iben Staff casting Iben's Blast, which is by far the most common approach for Iron Man and does about 46% more DPS than the Slayer Staff using Magic Dart. And the last option is to use a Trident, which if you are an Iron Man just learning Barrows, it's pretty unlikely you will already have the 87 Slayer requirement to obtain a Trident in the first place, but if you do have one, it is roughly 6% more DPS than the Ivan Staff. These damage calculations are rough approximations based on DPS dealt to Darox, but they paint a pretty decent picture of what you can expect from these three different weapons. Your offhand should be your best mage offhand like a god book or the mages book or a tome of fire. The reason I personally like to use a tome of fire with Ibans is that Ibans blast uses fire runes but does not count as a fire spell. So the tome of fire will always provide you with infinite fire runes without using any of the tome's charges. Your cape should be a god cape obtained from the wilderness mage arena, and if you do have the requirements I would highly recommend getting the mage arena 2 versions as they are really good capes and not very hard to obtain. 
For jewelry, you will want at least a glory or better, but if you don't have access to one yet, an amulet of power should be okay, and your ring slot should be one of these three things. Either you wear a dueling ring for the Pharax Enclave teleport, an explorer's ring for the prayer bonus, or any of the Dagonoth King rings like a Seer's ring for example, but I recommend prioritizing prayer bonus here as the DPS increase from a Seer's ring really will be negligible. For gloves, I recommend using the best RFD gloves you have available, but I would recommend putting in the time to getting those Barrows gloves because they really are an overpowered item for how early on you can obtain them. Boots won't make a huge impact, so I usually use just some sort of ranging boots to minimize switches later on. Lastly, you will want to bring a couple switches for both range and melee. For range, you want to bring a ranged weapon switch, either the rune crossbow or the magic shortbow, the Ava's accumulator or assembler, and the best range top that you have. You want to make sure not to wear a metal top like a rune plate body while ranging because the effect of picking up ammunition won't work with metal tops. And for melee, you want to bring a DDS and a D skimmy or better alongside your best defender. Honestly, there are a ton of different approaches to gear, but really, if you have decent stats, you can get away with just about anything and you will see some wacky outfits here. So feel free to experiment what works best for you, like minimizing switches or prioritizing prayer bonus. Your inventory should contain prayer pots, food, your runes, and switches, and look something like this. You don't need to completely fill your inventory with food and prayer pots, because you will be teleporting out after each run. Since there are three different ways of getting here, your inventory will change depending on the method you choose. So here are some setups for each method. The difference between each of these methods really just comes down to the teleports that you will use to get there and get out. So if you're using a fairy ring to get there, make sure you bring a method of teleporting to a nearby one like the Arty Cape and your Draymond Staff to use the fairy ring. If you are using the Berg de Rot teleport, make sure to bring your Mauritania Legs 3, and if you're using a house portal, bring runes to teleport to your house or house teleport tabs. Now when you finish your run, you need to replenish your stats and potentially bank to resupply. At low levels, the most efficient way of doing this is probably using a Ring of Dueling to teleport to the Ferex Enclave. There's a pool there that can completely restore all your stats and a bank nearby that you can use to resupply. It's unlikely that this early on you will have a rejuvenation pool in your house, but if you do, obviously use that. One optimization you can do, however, is building an altar in your house and bringing more food along so that you don't need to bank every single run. Because as an Iron Man, your biggest bottleneck will always be the supplies, so finding ways to reduce consumption of Ring of Duelings and Prayer Pots will go a long way. The last item you need to bring is a spade so you can dig into the crypts, and if you're like me and forget about the spade every single time you come here, there is a spade spawn in this shack. And you will use this spade to dig into each of the Barrows Brothers crypts. One last small tip about the inventory is even if you are using a Tome of Fire, still bring along some fire runes as when you switch out your Tome and Iben's staff, the game will think you no longer have fire runes equipped and deselect the Iben's Blast spell to autocast, which is really just annoying, so bringing some extra fire runes prevents this from happening. So now we're ready to start some runs. The first thing we need to talk about is the order in which you should kill all six brothers. For the sake of simplicity, I'm only going to go over the method for killing all six because for the vast majority of your time here, this will be the most optimal strategy in obtaining loot. The first three brothers you will kill will always be in this same order. The first is Darox. Make sure to pray melee as Darox's max hit is a 57 when he's at 1 HP. The second is Arams, which you're going to pray mage and switch to your range gear. Arams will have a 5% chance to drain your strength level by 5 each time, but this really shouldn't have a major impact. Third is Carols, and you're going to pray range, switch to your melee gear, and then you're going to dump your entire DDS spec into him. His special will drain your agility level, but again, this really shouldn't cause any problems. The reason we will always kill these three brothers first is because all three of them will do a considerable amount of damage if they aren't prayed against, and your prayer will always be drained within the mounds and crypt, so we need to ensure our prayer will be up for these three brothers. By the time you get to the next three brothers, you will most likely have run out of prayer or are very low, and you really shouldn't need prayer against them. So if you have stacked enough defense, just eat your food and save your prayer pots. However, if you do have any prayer points left over, use the rest on Protect from Melee. 
Fourth is Guthans. His special is to heal himself, so the fight might end up being a little bit longer, and his max hit is a 24, so just keep your HP up and tank his hits. Fifth is Torags with a max hit of 23 and a set effect that drains your energy, which this really shouldn't pose much of a threat in combat. And lastly is Varix with a max hit of also 23 and a 25% chance to ignore defense, armor, and protection prayers, which can make him kind of annoying, but just focus on eating and you'll be fine. Outside of the armor set effects that the brothers have, there aren't any special mechanics you need to watch out for, so just keep your prayer up for the first three brothers, and then focus on eating for the last three. The only other mechanic regarding to combat you need to remember is whenever you're within one of the crypts, your prayer will constantly drain. The prayer drain will happen once every 18 seconds and will drain 8 prayer points plus the number of brothers you killed, maxing out at 14. So each run you do, one out of the 6 brothers crypts will spawn as a tunnel. If you encounter this before killing all 5 other brothers, leave, eliminate the rest, and then return. Once you've killed the five other brothers, return to the crypt and enter the tunnel. You will get two confirmation messages every time you try to enter the tunnel, but you can talk to the strange old man that's walking around the Barrows Mounds to get it reduced to one message. I'm really not sure why this isn't just set by default, but at least we can still set it. So once you're down here, your objective is to reach the center room, kill the last brother, and claim your loot. Basically how it works is you'll spawn in one of the four corners of the tunnel, which has nine rooms connected with doors and hallways. Not all the doors will work however, and you will need to find the correct path to get to the center room. The doors that will work will be a slightly lighter color and have a right click option. However, if you want to make your life a little easier, use this rune light plugin, as it will highlight the doors you can use, and this just makes it a little more AFK which is always nice. Now every time you enter a door, a random mob will spawn, and it will be one of these mobs and sometimes the last Barrels brother will spawn as well. These normal mobs are pretty weak and usually best to kill with melee to save on runes, but if you don't feel like switching, they will die just fine to mage as well. Now is probably as good a time as any to mention the percentage that will show in the corners. This percentage will determine the loot you get alongside of how many brothers you kill. This percentage will go up anytime you kill a Barrels brother or mobs in the tunnel. So how it works is it'll take 10% of the monster's level and add that to the percentage. So, for example, if we take Varax, who's level 115, it'll increase it by 11.5%. This information is kind of important because we want to optimize our loot. If your percentage is 88% or higher, you'll have a chance to get the Carol's Bolt Racks, which take up a slot that could have been runes. So unless you specifically want Bolt Racks, you want to stop before that 88% mark. But if you go over, it really isn't the end of the world. There's a lot of different setups that you can do that'll get you pretty close to this 88% mark, but the one I usually default to is killing one blood worm and two skeletons, which will always get you to 86.3%, but it's pretty easy to figure out what you need to kill since it's always 10% of the level, so just kill what you need as you go. A kind of niche tip is if one of the Barrows brothers spawn in the four corner rooms, you can actually use the ladder to safe spot it, even if it's not the room you spawned in and the ladder isn't visibly there, its hitbox still is. The center of the Barrows tunnel will always have a puzzle door to enter it, but if you're using Runelight, it'll just tell you the answer, and it's highlighted in green, so just click the one that's highlighted. Once you enter, you will see a chest in the center. You will click the chest once to open it, and once again to claim the loot. And if you haven't killed all six brothers by this point, the sixth brother will spawn once you click the chest the first time. You will certainly have no prayer points remaining at this stage, so if you need to, drink a prayer pot and pray the respective prayer for that brother and finish him off. I would only drink a prayer pot if it's one of the first three brothers like Derek's, Aram's, or Carol's, as the other three again you can get away with just eating food. Once he's dead, if you haven't finished getting your percentage up, kill any other mobs and then claim your loot from the chest. Then teleport out of the tunnel, reset your stats and resupply if you need to to start another run. As far as the general strategy goes, that's pretty much it. This boss, like I said, is some of the easiest content in the game, and is really closer to feeling like a mini game than an actual boss fight. So now let's talk about that juicy loot. How the chest works is there is initially one roll on the table, and then each kill of another brother will add an additional roll to that table, totaling out of 7 maximum rolls. All the Barrow's equipment is 1 out of 2448, but with 7 rolls all together with the vast amount of items that are on the table, you will get an item 1 out of every 15 chests, 
which honestly is not that bad considering how big of an upgrade this gear is compared to rune or dragon. Here's all the normal loot that you can obtain, and you will get a lot of runes here, and you almost always get enough runes to cover the cost and more that you use during your trip, which is really nice. Now here's where I said that even if you aren't using the Berg to Rot teleport, getting Mauritania Legs 3 can still be very useful. If you complete the Mauritania Hard Diaries, you will receive 50% more runes in your loot. This is a huge help as an Iron Man, and you will very quickly get a large stack of Mind, Chaos, Death, and Blood runes, which is usually why people want to avoid getting the Bolt Racks as the runes are far more valuable. With that, you should have everything you need to start your own Barrels Grind. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel, it really does help me out a ton. If there was anything I missed or other guides you would like to see me make in the future, please let me know down in the comments, I'm always happy to have a discussion. Happy hunting guys, I'll catch you in the next one.